our national anthem. What is happening, film dorks? Jake S. Weissman here broadcasting from the epicenter of independent cinema. Uh, there's actually a lot going on, and I'll try and dive into it as soon as I possibly can. Uh, we have a good show today. Now that everything has really opened up, uh, there's news finally, and we get to see what's going on. So I did find an article that I'm very excited to read out loud. I haven't read it yet, but I wasn't very surprised to see the headline. Uh, so <laughs> it is Wednesday, June 2nd. Thank you all for watching this. Uh, <laughs> when you get a chance to watch this, I want to remind everybody to like, subscribe, all of that good stuff that I hate begging people to do, but it really helps out. Um, we have a absolutely terrific show. Hi. Sorry, I'm going to have Special guest appearance. Finally, Bones. Karen. Hi. Hi. <laughs> See you on Zombie Banana Spiders. <laughs> um, <clears throat> dearest Bones, uh, tomorrow is our, is my show. <laughs> Excuse me. I co-host it with a buddy, uh, Jack, and the show is called Film Stuff's Live. We show it at 9, 8, right? 9 p.m. 8 central. Uh, I, you know what, I live in the central time zone and we are lucky enough to have guests from every single time zone so far. So I had to pick a time that worked both for people who lived in New York and also people who lived in LA, uh, as well as, you know, all of us right there in the middle. So, uh, come hang out with us every single Thursday. I and my buddy Jack, uh, interview an independent filmmaker, I, uh, not this week, we have a, a, a running series called Film Stuffs So Far. I'm going to create this Film Stuffs So Far Volume 2. Um, where, uh, you know, once every month and a half, once every month, two months, we do a recap of all of our guests' short work so that not only do you as an audience member get to hear all of the wise sage advice that, uh, and, uh, you know, even if it's not advice, it's just really great stories, a really fun conversation about independent film, the future of cinema, the things that we talk about here. Um, and I, it, 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 uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, it's a really fun show. We've done one before, this is going to be the work of Erica Wester. We're going to show Welcome to Hell. I'm going to be showing my own work, Clean Sheets, because I had a guest, Dakota Loesch. We talked for two hours. He's one of my favorite people in the world. He's my very favorite actor. I highly suggest you watch uh, all of the saved episodes. This is a show where I'm just trying. If you watch those episodes, you see me kind of stutter a little bit. We're live. 
I'm learning how to be live and live keeps me honest. Uh, I'm very pleased about that, but also there's some stuttering and um, I want to get better at that. So part of that is doing the show every day. Um, and I do want to thank Bones for encouraging me to do this every day, because if it were just up to me, I'd probably be like off and on. And I think it is really uh there's enough news finally, and I finally have this cool platform. I use StreamYard, um, this really cool platform to talk about the news, and I can share it with you guys really fast, and we can do everything at the speed of thought, and I don't really have to uh, edit as much anymore. So please like, subscribe, all of that good stuff, and interact with me. <laughs> talk to me. Have uh, We'll have a conversation if you get a chance to have a conversation. Um, all right, so let's, uh, get into it. What is on, uh, box office news right now? There's all sorts of stuff happening. It's not, there's some interesting things. Um, there's some less interesting things. Oops. Uh, so let's, what do we see here? So Seth Rogen is producing a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reboot to be released in 2023. Now, a closer inspection of this tweet, it's actually a pretty cool tweet. It took me a long time to figure out what it was. It's an illustration of like what Leonardo would be doing. I think they're really going to be enhancing the teenage aspect of it, obviously, is what he's like pushing. And it's going to be a really fun movie. That being said... You know, when I saw that Seth Rogen was doing Ninja Turtles, I thought, okay, that makes sense. And also, I'm not like crazy excited for it. I think it'll be very good and and better than other stuff. Uh, this interesting tweet from yesterday. Gotta give credit to Paramount John Krasinski, who decided to wait out a 14-month exclamation point delay on Quiet Place instead of flipping it to a streamer for a quick cash hit like so many others did. Their patience paid off big time this weekend. That's some um, uh, romantic talk. Uh, people are going to be really pushing the theatrical experience. I don't know who Steven Zeitchik is. I don't know if he works for theaters, if he works in the industry, what he has that check mark for. Um, but, you know, it's... Uh, the fun thing about all these comments in here, um, if it will let me load, uh, is that I don't think John Krasinski had a say in it. You know, look what Paramount did to the new Mark Wahlberg movie. There's some interesting comments in here. Um, I mean, not about that. Not necessarily a lot of big studios flip movies they believed into streaming out of desperation. I mean, the movie might stink, but I don't think that factored it into overall reasons for moving it to streaming. Um, while all that is true, they sold the tomorrow, they being Paramount, sold the Tomorrow War without remorse coming to America in the trial of Chicago 7 to streaming services. <clears throat> but overall, those were all good decisions, according to you know, that CF guy. So uh, I agree with that. I always, I've been saying, I have record of me saying, you know, uh, it's just about um, following the cash. If they feel like they're going to make more money selling to a streamer, they'll sell to a streamer. If they feel like they're going to make more money saving it for theaters, they'll save it for theaters. It sounded like they did. And uh, that's fabulous for them. I'm, you know, it is interesting. People are going to be giving John, John Krasinski credit. And um, I don't know if, like, you know, how how hard could he put his foot down? How much ownership does he have over it? If he has ownership over it, then I'll give him all the credit. But, you know, this is somebody at Paramount really playing chess and uh, saving it. And they got $60, $70 million in their opening weekend. They do have to give a little bit of that to the theaters, uh, but we'll see. It seemed to be successful, and, and it'll be staying in theaters for quite some time. Now, this is great because this is Deadline.com doing an article about, uh, what's his name? John Logan, who wrote a couple James Bond movies. 
and he did it for the New York Times and I ran out of free articles. So I wasn't able to read it. So they uh, <laughs> have been able to uh, sum it up for us. Uh, if I have time, I will get into it. There's a couple of articles out here um, where like, if I have time, I will read it. But it's really important that I read the one that I do have saved. Um, but it is fun going through all this with you. Alamo Draft House completes sale out of bankruptcy and opening five new theaters as box office revives. You know, they're try they're gonna try and shoot the moon in their own wheelhouse. They are a little artier, uh, and they could make a killing. They're kind of the right size, they're that music box size. So more power to them. Uh Discovery and Warner Media reveal name of merged company everybody's ripping on this right now. Um, and I read somewhere that like, this is going to be the one time that we see this logo. So rip on it while you can. Uh, confirms Shrek five is in the scripting stages. We'll get back to that when there's a script Taylor Swift in a new David O. Russell movie. It's amazing that David O. Russell is a you know, he makes some really, really, really incredible movies and he's a real asshole. So this is an incredible cast, as you can see, and everyone still wants to work with him. So more power to him. Uh, maybe he'll chill out, but I really do like uh, many of his films. AMC Theaters targets Reddit, Wall Street bets traders via website. The mega chain will also offer a free large popcorn and special movie screening invites to speculative retail investors behind the recent share price surges so uh that's the hollywood reporter i didn't read that article that is one that i saw on the back burner um they're trying to i guess they're called apes <laughs> they're called apes now uh people who invest in amc i think that's because of the whole monkey meme uh king kong <sighs> I mean, if you follow Reddit and you know about Movie Circle Jerk subreddit, then I think that's where it comes from. But there's a whole, it's kind of like um, the movie version of Dogecoin, Dogecoin, Dogecoin. So, um, all right. So they're trying to, they're pleased with the people who kept them a little bit afloat during all of this. But we'll... Uh, We'll see what they do with that money. Because right now, they're speculating. And they're thinking about more real estate and buying up real estate and just kind of trying to monopolize the whole game as far as movie theaters are concerned. Because if they own all of them, then they can make the money. Cruella was streamed by 686,000 households on Memorial Day weekend, which roughly rounds up to about 20 Point five million dollars for premier access win uh weekend that is in addition to i believe upwards of 30 million i think it was like 28 27 million dollars um that they made in the theaters that being said this 20.5 right here this guy right here uh is all for them all for silas all for silas all for silas uh it's they don't have to share it as opposed to that 30. So altogether, was it a good weekend? Because there's a lot of math. There's too much math now, but that's, that is kind of the deal, right? Like, okay. So quiet place did 60 or 70 and they had to split X percentage with the movie theater. And then the rest went to the studio. Whereas, this a full chunk went right to the studio no intermediary they just made their money um and then made you know the majority of their other cash so uh that's pretty cool uh this is the kind of stuff we were talking about was going to happen with these kind of hybrid releases it's not a surprise whatsoever um it's just we follow the money we have to follow the money it's so simple so I don't know if they're considering this a success. They're saying it was like 38% down from Mulan, 39% down from Mulan, according to Deadline. 
I got that right here. Um, but you know what? It's in it for the long haul. It's not going anywhere, and it'll cost thirty dollars for the next uh, two months or something. So, it, there maybe there isn't the the urgency to go see these things uh, opening weekend. Just isn't there. It's already there. So maybe as we see Quiet Place dip off, we we'll, might just see kind of this consistent Cruella, not in the theater. I think the theater mechanics of it all are still going to pretty much be the same. Uh, but as far as the streaming service is concerned, it as with the reviews and everything, we'll see what happens. People are pretty much enjoying this movie. So, and it'll be free soon and we'll see how many people join the subscription service just because of that. I think it also comes out pretty much near Loki. So it's all in tandem now. So maybe this is all to plan. They spent a hundred million dollars on this movie, but like it won't, it might take a couple more weeks, but that's it. Let's keep moving along. Will Apple be the next tech giant to buy a studio? The iPhone maker was a huge entertainment industry footprint, but its streamer, Apple TV, lacks a huge library, like a mansion with hardly any furniture in it. Let's save that, huh? That's a good one. That's Hollywood Reporter. This is the article I was just talking about on my phone. Indiana Jones 5, who cares? Uh, Wrath of Man. IndieWire, we'll, we'll read about that. I don't really care about these, like, lingering questions. HBO Max with ads launches, promising lowest commercial ad load in streaming. So we're seeing the rise of PVOD, and um, it'll be way cheaper or free. And they'll have their ads. And so now we'll be able to watch Justice League or something, but it'll just like have a lot of ads in it. Um, I don't know if anyone sees anything that seems interesting to them. Okay. So this is interesting. We're just getting here. We're just getting here. This article is the one I wanted to talk about. And this is the one I'm going to read. This is the most interesting thing here. And it is upvoted eight. Now nine because of me. Um, why did movie theater CEOs make such a killing during the pandemic? And you know what? The comments, there's only a couple of comments. And they're glib. And this is my dude, AGOT fan. Uh, this guy always drops the good knowledge here and says the unpopular opinion. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. I don't have a personal relationship with him. I've just been, um, I post a little bit on here, but not really anymore. And I do uh, creep, I creep, <laughs> I creep around. And um, just want to give you guys a bigger look at his thing uh, or their thing rather. Uh, I do creep around on here to see what's up. And I'm always surprised people love studios and they just want to, they just side with the studios kind of blindly. It seems like it's very, very strange. Um, so we'll read the comments after there's only four cons aren't it. Why did movie theater CEOs make such a killing during the pandemic? Like, isn't that interesting to people? Why is that so low on the list? It's so low. We just went through so much stuff. I've been talking for so long. And it's here, but it's buried. And I always think that's interesting. That's been so consistent. It's been unbelievably consistent with my experience uh, doing this show in the year that I've been recording stuff for YouTube unbelievably consistent it drives me crazy so let's dive in right we got there 
this is the story I really care about and I haven't read it yet. Uh, we'll probably go back to that Apple business if we got time. Um, Cause that's interesting to me. That is interesting to me. Um, but this is in the rap.com, which is like, isn't that just news for IMDb? It might be. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, before I get into this, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out with me right now. Do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, share. Um, I, you know, I love doing this. I love talking about this. I hope people care to listen to it. Um, but I will be here every day. I won't be here tomorrow because we have our nighttime show, but I'm here every day, but Thursday, uh, and our interviews are Thursday night. So please check out jelly roll, Chicago.com come out tomorrow, watch film stuff so far where we can, we're going to watch. It's basically an online shorts film festival with uh, previous guests work. And I'm really excited about it. And I want you guys to meet Jack if you haven't met Jack yet. All right. Shall we? Shall we? Folks. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to just groan into the... It's like, this is the least surprising headline I've ever read. Doesn't, like, of course... Of course. So hopefully there's some goodies in here. Of course. It is. I am trying to do uh, a daily show at this time, except for tomorrow. I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm not going to be on uh, on Thursdays in the morning. But um, I want to get some more playtime and nothing stopping me from doing this. So hopefully I'm not bugging everybody. I'm just kind of sitting in my own corner of the playground talking about stuff that I, I, you know, it's fun for me to job out. And if I just scream at a computer, you know, I think it's the same thing as these T channels and everything. Like everybody just wants to yell at a computer uh, because I don't think anyone, ah, I don't think anyone, um, you want to gossip in real life, but you have actual relationships to deal with. Um, these are things that I'm interested in and I don't, there's not too, too many people who like, as you can see, man, like we're all the way down. This has eight, uh, nine up view votes on, on Reddit. No one gives a shit. Uh, so let's see why. Okay, so this is AMC Theater CEO Adam Marone and Cineworld's Mookie Green Greidinger. Greidinger. Why do movie theater CEOs make such a killing? <laughs> uh, I heard he shot a whole month and then had to do reshoots and was like, I'm done. I am done. All right, let's do it. Why do movie theater CEOs make such a killing during the pandemic by Jeremy Fuster, June 1st is yesterday morning. Well, CEOs at Disney slashed their pay, top execs at AMZ, theaters and Regal, parents, Cineworld were rewarded even as their companies lost billions. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. But you know what? I don't have any proof. So what can I say? Uh, <laughs> back to it. Uh, while some Hollywood like they lowered the pay of their top executives as stock prices and revenue collapsed due to uh, the cough compensation for CEOs of the world's two biggest cinema chains saw the biggest surges of any entertainment company. How does that work? How does that work? Seems to happen every time, but earlier this week, 
AMC Theaters reported that compensation for CEO Adam Arone rose from $9.6 million in 2019 to $20.9 million in 2020, even as the company lost $4.6 billion with a B in 2020 and was forced to close hundreds of locations worldwide and furlough 26,000 employees. Almost all of its U.S. jobs have been recovered as AMC has reopened its 593 domestic locations in recent months. Is that true, though? All, what's, I want to hear, I want the proof. I want the proof that everyone who lost their job, that it's like recovered because it didn't recover for me. I mean, I don't know what their, what their litmus is and what their units of measurement are. It, it's, am I, I'll just take their word for it. Everyone's good because the locations are open again. The jobs were recovered doesn't mean the same people are doing them. Fair enough. I've been wondering. I've been wondering who they hired. I've been purposefully keeping out because I'm still salty. I'm just real salty about all of it. And, um, you know, my old boss, <clears throat> when all this happened, my old boss was on a ski trip. And it was March. And it was like his third vacation of the year. And he wanted us to kind of deal with it. And then we lost our jobs. And uh, we're, you know, it was kind of like pat on the back. Good job. And uh, he had a record year the year before that. Didn't give me a bonus, which is fine. But he did buy himself a Tesla. And this is an independent theater. So. And Lord knows, you know what? He has other means of income. So he could have gotten a Tesla from all of his properties or whatever. All I'm saying is from where I'm standing. So I'm glad they got their jobs back, I guess. Um, but also, I'm not I'm not feeling it. At Regal Cinema's UK-based parent company, Cineworld. Meanwhile, CEO Mookie Greedinger, sorry if I'm butchering that, and CEO Israel Greedinger saw their compensation get cut in half from just over a combined three million pound to 1.44 million pound, roughly two million dollars US. But in January, despite staunch opposition from some shareholders as the company lost three billion pound in 2020, the brothers were approved for a long-term incentive program that could see them receive up to 65 million pound in stock awards if Cineworld's stock price rebounds to pre-pandemic levels. Okay, I just kind of zoned out reading that because I think I got distracted by the, <laughs> the money. Um, so, but in January, despite, despite staunch opposition from some shareholders, so they lost, they still got a bonus, but it was half as much as they usually get but they did get signed up for a long-term incentive program where they could get up to 65 million pounds. That's, I mean, whew. sorry, I look like a dope. Um, we'll see what this means. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is like the year's money versus. Meanwhile, these guys have kept everything open. They don't care about health. They don't care about anyone's well-being. No one came up with a plan. And they'll receive stock awards if, you know, things kind of go back to normal which it looks like, you know, there's a tons of content coming out um, with Marvel and everything reopening. Like there's tons of content coming out. So there's no doubt in my mind we'll be fine. Uh, neither company responded to requests for comment. Neither company responded to requests for comment. Why would they? Why would they? But that's a little frustrating, isn't it? Within Hollywood, the few other CEOs who saw significant surges in their compensation led companies whose share price rise during the pandemic, namely CEO, uh, Netflix CEO Reed Hastings 
and Ted Sarandos, as well as Apple CEO Tim Cook. Like, that makes sense. I'm sorry. I got, like, cat hair all over me. That's why I keep touching my face and everything. Like, um, I'm haunted. My cat got out yesterday, and it, it just terrified me. Uh, I had no idea. I had no idea. The window didn't have a screen until a bug flew in. Then I closed the window, and then we couldn't find him this morning, and he was in the garage, and I'm glad everybody's safe, but I feel like I'm more traumatized than a cat. And uh, now I just have these cat hairs just bothering me um, to remind me to be a better dad because it really uh, has me a little bugaboo, everybody. It has me a little bugaboo, and uh, he's okay. Uh, if he wants to come back, he can. I got Pico de Gallo here keeping me company, but if lion wants to come in i got a seat for him all right back to business back to blast tax thanks for hanging out with me guys um namely ceo yeah okay so netflix and apple they all got bonuses but doesn't that make sense like duh that makes sense to me in 2020, Hastings and Sarandos received compensation packages worth $43.2 million and $39.3 million, respectively, all while Net, uh, Netflix stock soared. See, like their stock is soaring from $325 per share to as high as $555 in January 2021. That's huge. With the current price still up year over year at $484 per share, Cook's non-stock compensation increased 28% from 2019 excuse me, to just under 15 million in 2020 when Apple stock exploded from 57 per share at the start of the pandemic in March, 2020 to a current price of $125. So lots of uh, fluctuation, but it's still pretty good. You know, like I can't buy that kind of fucking stock. I can buy that 25 cents a share GameStop. I mean, not anymore. I'm not even playing. I don't play that game, but um that's what they're talking about. Like apparently it helped AMC and they're like just taking advantage of it. And why shouldn't they? They're a corporation. That's what we're learning. Uh, and you know what? Streaming services. I mean, this was their time to shine. This was the hiccup. And if all their share went up and everybody got paid out because they were in the streaming game and, and people had to stay at home, like what else is there to say? What else is there to say about that? But AMC and Cinema, uh, Cineworld stock hasn't seen such fortune. Cineworld stock, which has never exceeded four pound per share, is currently selling at 92 pence, down from a peak of three pound 18 on the day Avengers Endgame was released. Does that mean you guys, my friends, uh, or... Or the pond should be buying up Cineworld stock. I mean, you'll be helping these guys out, but if you make out, I mean, I want you guys to make the money. But it sounds like they figured out that, um, you know, if they if 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 you guys make money, then they'll make even more, which is, I guess, business. And this is the film industry. It's an industry, folks. The business came before the art. The art is a byproduct of the business. Understanding the business will help, theoretically, the art. I mean, it all is, it's all one. As Neil Young always said, it's all one song. It's all one song. AMC has fared better this year with its price closing just over $26 last Friday after languishing at around $2 for much of 2020, but that Wall Street bump has less to do with the company's performance or renewed confidence in the movie theaters than a Reddit campaign. Wall Street bump has less to do with the company's performance or renewed confidence in movie theaters than a Reddit campaign and 3 million new shareholders seeking to boost the stock of pandemic battered brands like GameStop. So they just saw like an unbelievable boost in individual shareholders and they are going to reward them individually for that. Um, Cause it kind of helped. It helped. Uh, even with the influx of wall street bets, Fattis who just want to stick it to short sellers, AMC's, <clears throat> excuse me, stock is still down from a five-year peak, just under $35 per share at the end of 2016. I mean, 
So the stock has just been going down since 2016. Uh, I believe we call that a trend. You know, we were we were just talking about this. Me and Bones were just talking about this. Um, that I've talked to quite a few people who are like, we could have never seen this coming. We thought things were going to just come back to normal so quickly. And she and I knew it wasn't going to go back. I'm in, I'm to be perfectly frank, actually impressed um, that we're back so quickly and that everything is coming and in, in opening up right now. I'm, it's actually really impressive. I thought it was going to be longer. Um, I People, I don't know what they were thinking and the movie theaters just really pushed this through. And so... Um, we saw it coming and we were waiting for a hiccup. We saw that the audiences were dwindling. We peaked at Black Panther, which to be fair is 2018. But you don't know what AMC was spending their money on. They spent a lot of money on um, infrastructure and putting new crap in their theaters. I, you know, We were a real bare bones indie theater where we just had candy and drinks and popcorn. Got them in and out. Um, could only fit 400 people max. But, you know, we sold out every show for two weeks of Black Panther. So, you know, we know what it's like to be busy. Um, and that money went, you know, back to the theater, theoretically. So um, we saw this coming. We knew that the second there was something like this that happened, that that streaming would do exactly this. The theaters would do exactly this. That's why I started doing this show so I could track it in real time. That's why I'm continuing to do the show so I can continue to track it in real time. Uh, Cause you know, it's not that um, it's not about predicting or being right. It's just about a diary. I'm just keeping this diary of what's going on. And I think it is interesting and we'll see uh, where it plays out. Cause the stocks just keep going down. Oh, that's the end of it. Sorry, guys. Jeremy Fuster. Thank you, Jeremy Fuster. Um, all the way down here. All the way. All the way at the bottom of the Reddit page. Because, it, you know, obviously we're going to be talking about Ninja Turtles. And I, you know, of course we're talking about Ninja Turtles. I think that's a good idea. Um, I sound so facetious and like, yeah, Seth Rogen is doing Ninja Turtles. Of course, we're going to talk about that. All right, what are the comments? Why did movie theater CEOs make such a killing during the pandemic? This is an open question. We have answers because it, economical crisis always makes CEOs more rich. A little glib. God damn, these two are ugly. Jesus Christ. That's just funny. Mean though, but it was funny. Here is somebody just wrote out the the article, and it says because business is crony neo feudalism and, and not capitalism. So like nothing insightful. <laughs> There's nothing insightful to be said on Reddit about that. Um, and I disagree. I don't think that uh, just because. I really disagree that just because um, there's a pandemic that and their CEOs ipso facto one plus two vis-a-vis -vis quid pro quo. I think it makes sense for Netflix to be making money during a streaming. And if, uh, you know, it's like, it's like saying the CEO of Sears made a shitload of money during the pandemic. And it's like, how did that happen? You got to, it needs to be a percentage, but like, who am I? It doesn't need to be anything. I'm nobody. <laughs> um, all right. Let's, um, I do want to. That's a song from Bob's Burgers that I heard recently. <laughs> Stop screen. Uh, I do have this other article that I, I want to pump through because I am 
more than curious will apple be the next tech giant to buy a studio the hollywood reporter i was just um benignly talking about it yesterday where i think that uh these a tech conglomerate will then buy a movie studio and a television studio fully well-rounded content and then there's they have their own streaming service there's online that i mean it's all inclusive so this is the hollywood reporter and uh let's just see if there's anything interesting in here um i won't waste everybody's time if it's not that great will apple be the next tech giant to buy a studio the iphone maker has a huge entertainment industry footprint but its streamer apple tv plus lacks a huge library like a mansion with hardly any furniture in it by george i can't pronounce any of these names i'm bad at this job uh jorg so oh sly i'm sorry this is from today, though, this morning, June 2nd, 2021, 5.15 a.m. This is Tim Cook, Apple CEO. Amid a wave of M&A fever, will Amazon's $8.45 billion takeover of MGM prompt its Silicon Valley rival Apple to refresh its shopping list to include a Hollywood studio? The iPhone maker already has a giant footprint in the we were saying that with its uh, services division, which includes Apple TV Plus, Apple Music, the App Store, iCloud, iCloud, and more. Its revenue topped $16.9 billion in the first quarter, up from $13.3 billion in the year ago period, and boasts 660 million paid subscribers in total. That's a lot. Like, that's just, can you imagine that kind of a pool? And CEO Tim Cook has described streamer Apple TV Plus's ambition to be one of the most desired platforms for storytellers, singling out comedy series Ted Lasso, drama The Morning Show, and the miniseries Defending Jacobs as its titles with significant buzz. There's a couple of movies in there, too, that uh, I'm interested in, like the Tom Hanks movie that they bought, uh, The Grey, uh, Greyhound, I think. Um, you know, but I, I don't. I got to wait for everything to hit Redbox or something because or Amazon Prime because I don't have time or money for all of these streamers. Uh, so that's why I do think we're going to get the big aggregate and we'll end up when all of the dust settles. I don't know how many years it's going to take when all of the dust settles. There's going to be like two, three, four major streamers, probably just two or three, and it'll just be done and there won't be this. Paramount Plus, Apple Plus, like all of this shit will just come together. I do think Netflix might go ahead. Um, Paramount is like, I feel like someone's going to buy Paramount, especially now that MGM got bought. So Netflix or Apple Plus may. Whew, we'll see. Oh, but they're about to, they're talking about this stuff. So let's see. Um, let's see. Um makes perfect sense let's see what studio they might be talking about but the streamer is seen by one wall street analyst as lacking multiple regular breakout hits which has led some to argue for a studio acquisition morgan stanley research release in april found that only eight percent of the u.s respondents said they use apple tv plus right excuse me a figure that lags far below netflix 58 percent amazon prime 45 percent and disney plus that's way lower. Okay. Apple has made, but Apple isn't going anywhere, right? So Apple isn't going anywhere. Maybe these are the big ones. I think this is it. I think by the end of it, it will all be aggregated to Apple, Netflix, Amazon, and Disney. That makes perfect sense to me. Apple, Netflix, Prime, Disney and everything will fall under there. Okay. Apple has made a major strategic mistake, not buying a Hollywood studio while Amazon, Disney, Netflix, and others run away with the content. Wedbush uh, analyst Dan Ives says content is king and Apple built a mansion with hardly any furniture in it. MGM was a no brainer acquisition for Apple and they missed a huge opportunity. I don't necessarily agree with that. I heard that, um, and I might be reading more about that later, that uh, 
the MGM acquisition is going to take some time because there's a lot of different factors, a lot of different producers, a lot of different specific deals that they have to deal with. They can't just take all of the movies and throw it on their platform. They have to now go through all of the contracts and like either streamline everything or, or figure it out, you know? Um, Hal Vogel, CEO of Vogel Capital Management suggests that Cook is afraid of shareholder blowback if he goes Hollywood in a big way. So this is um, a graph top drivers for Apple TV plus subscribers, free annual offer, 34%, good original programming, 30%, a broad selection of movies, 21%, newer content, 21%, and then has my favorite TV shows and movies. So yeah, it's, they really, and this is only like 6% of the viewing audience, as opposed to, like it said, Netflix has 58%. Well, I don't know how all this works. It's U.S. respondents, so I don't know how it all works. Oh, well, I guess it works because it's not a zero-sum game because I watch all three of these platforms. So 58% watch Netflix, 45% watch Amazon Prime, 31% watch Disney Plus, and 6% watch Apple TV Plus. The likes of Apple, Alphabet's Google, and Facebook are often cited as cash-rich tech titans that could gobble up Hollywood studios with much financial trouble, but two of them also have signaled their lack of sustained interest in more traditional premium content production. Facebook and YouTube's, uh, Google's YouTube already tried plotting bigger scripted content pushes, then scaled back their ambitions, right? They tried and didn't quite, didn't quite take. And so an Apple... Hmm. We'll see. I feel like it maybe paramount, but we'll see. But AT&T's $43 billion deal to merge Warner Media with Discovery and Amazon's MGM by underscores the quote intensifying streaming wars as a potential catalyst for the next wave of industry consolidation with some of the big tech companies increasingly seen as potential acquirers. CFRA research analyst Tuna Amobi says that's a great name. Apple could choose to ramp up its Hollywood division with a mega buy of the studio of a studio the size of, say, Lionsgate, which gets mentioned as a possible takeover target. OK, OK. Given its relative lack of scale, Lionsgate's market cap is three point eight billion dollars, while Apple's is two point one trillion. As well as its 17,000 title library and film and TV franchises like Hunger Games, Twilight, and Power. That's great. Good call, guys. I wonder who put that in because it's a Hollywood reporter. So I wonder who's all, uh, who all is, you know, uh, plotting, planting that little seed in here. So everyone's like, you think maybe maybe Lionsgate because they're not mentioning anybody else. And maybe, maybe Apple and Amazon are unique among tech giants insofar as they each have streaming services. Excuse me. So there are synergies in owning content libraries. Yes. Says Wedbush analyst, Michael Pector, or it could follow Netflix's lead and look to snap up smaller Hollywood shingles like Mark Miller's comic book company, Millerwood to bulk up its intellectual property ownership. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Amazon's smart acquisition of MGM will spur studio M and a, I don't know what that means. Sorry. Um, by its big tech streaming competitors that now face a crisis of content says Peter Safi, chairman of an advisory firm creative. It's just a lot of advisors and analysts and blah, 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 blah. Netflix is in search of franchises. Apple too. Even Amazon might not be done yet. Both, for both offensive and defensive reasons. And this story appeared in the May 26th issue of the Hollywood Reporter magazine. Well, it was published today on the website. It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. There's that's it's an exciting time. Everybody is putting their kind of feelers out and uh, there's so much money to be had and so many mergers to be made. 
I'm very interested to see because I agree. I think Apple TV needs something. And I, like I said before, those four, uh, the big four, I think that's where everything is going. Forget this Peacock shit. All the TV, someone's going to, you know, like forget Peacock, forget, you know, CBS, Owl Access turned into Paramount Plus. Forget it. It's gone. Um, and then even Warner Brother Discovery, Apple could just buy them out. And then Apple's in charge of, of DC. There's so many different outcomes that could happen. Um, Amazon will be busy with MGM, although Amazon has all the money in the world. So if they want to buy it, something else, there's nothing stopping them. We'll see what else Disney does, but they seem so happy with their franchises and you can't really blame them between Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, National Geographic, ESPN. They're doing just fine. Um, and it's up for everybody else. It's amazing that Netflix still has such a big lead on everybody and uh, they will soon, they're still making original content, getting their movies now in theaters even more to make a little bit more money and um, a little better kind of like industry cloud, I guess, become a little bit more regular because they still don't want to give them an Oscar, even though this year they got a bunch of Oscars. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all I got for you guys. Um, I'm very interested to see where this goes because now, as I've been saying, the great aggregation begins. All right. I... I picked a movie. I picked a movie that um, it's going to take me too long to talk about. So maybe I'll bring it back tomorrow. But so watch Hitchcock's Rebecca. I'm not crazy about Hitchcock. I really like this movie though. So I wanted to talk about it. Uh, but I'm, I think it's ready to wrap this up. Watch Rebecca. It's like a ghost story but it's not a ghost story. The acting is so great. And um, I'm on the edge of my seat the entire time watching it. I cannot suggest it enough, even though I, you know, what I would talk about is how Hitchcock is kind of a piece of shit um, as a human being. So, but that's a conversation for a different time and a different episode. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. If you swung in, if you are swinging in, I really appreciate you. Please again, join us tomorrow for film stuffs part two. We're going to be watching the work of Erica Wester, Simone Kissel, and my own clean sheets are in Dakota Loesch. Uh, visit jellyrollchicago.com please. And hang out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Um, I'm going to think I'm going to be doing more Twitch stuff. I'm going to be trying, I'm trying to do this. I, you know, like I said, I'm doing this every day. I won't be here tomorrow, but I have the, we're doing the interview tomorrow or we're doing the live show tomorrow night, nine, eight central. Um, I'm going to get back to writing, I think, cause that's always fun. And I got some ideas. Um, I'm working on pre-production on a film, so I'll keep you guys posted on that. And it's time to draw a little bit more. I got these markers that I really want to draw with. So, uh, and also I'm going to see if I can't play some video games. Some, I like playing Crazy Taxi and Countdown. What can I say? Countdown, Crackdown. I have Crazy Taxi and I have Crackdown 3. And these are the video games that I play. Um, but my headset hasn't been working, so hopefully it will. Um, gosh, thank you everybody for watching. This has been a wonderful one. I will see you tomorrow. Please join me uh, for Film Stuff's Light every Friday through Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central. And then join me for Film Stuff's Live with live interviews with great filmmakers uh, Thursday nights, 9, 8 Central. Uh, thank you so much. Much love to everybody. And I will see you in the future.